the focus in this broadcast, and the title of it actually, is the final divine word in this generation. And to be more specific, that final divine word is the gospel, which I'll address numerous angles on this topic today, and some of this prophetic information you'll hear from me you're not hearing at all from the ear-tickling TV preachers. Now, when I say the topic entitled today is the final divine word to this generation, it's not the final divine word because I'm saying it. It's the final divine word because God has said it in Christ 2,000 years ago. And I'll certainly be expounding on that in just a moment. Now, first of all, these two topics, the gospel and the topic of the Lord Jesus Christ himself are probably the two most rejected topics today in this world of 7.5 billion people. People don't want to hear it unless you're in China where there's 1.5 billion people and with millions of Chinese people there thirsting for God and getting saved in the Chinese underground church there. That's incredible. But the fact is that overall, most people in this world do not want to hear it. They reject the gospel, which is a Bible prophecy in itself. For example, detailed in the entire chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And typically, many people, at least here in end time America, would have already turned off this broadcast by now after just hearing me say the word gospel. In fact, these days, particularly here in America, to hear the true gospel, you've got to actually search for it. Now let me unfold this topic here, being the final divine word to this generation, which is the word spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. That's the key verse for today. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and the Lord said, quote, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. Matthew 24, verse 14. One of the key words in this verse is the term, the end, which I'll clarify a little later in the broadcast. But it is a hard fact from God's perspective there is no other message more important to the human race than this topic of the gospel as spoken 2,000 years ago by the Lord himself in Matthew 24 verse 14. Now the human race won't tell you that the gospel is the most important topic. People are more interested in Lady Gaga and the Super Bowl halftime show and Dancing with the Stars. Nevertheless the gospel which is all about the Lord Jesus Christ is the number one most important and critical message second to none. Why? Because there's no other ultimate solution or ultimate way for anyone to be powerfully saved and receive eternal life except through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only possible way if you're thirsty for God right now, you can be saved this very moment by calling out to the Lord Jesus Christ and embracing him right this moment. Now, for those who might not know what the gospel is, let me define it, which is these clear dynamics combined, which make up the gospel good news. That is, that first of all, Almighty God the God of the Bible, the creator of all things, stepped out of eternity 2,000 years ago and then himself literally walked this earth for 33 and a half years in Israel in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is literally God in human flesh. That's exactly what the New Testament says. And the reason God chose to come to this earth, this is still 
one of the dynamics of the gospel message itself the reason God chose to come to this earth was to carry our sins upon himself upon his sinless body on the cross in order that we might be forgiven by us believing in Jesus and by our accepting Christ as Savior and Lord that is good news that is God's very own plan we can be forgiven for all of our sins sometimes I've met people plenty of people actually over the years in ministry even in six years of prison ministry I met people that had committed such bad sins that in their own mind they they could not believe that that God could forgive them for these terrible things that they had done oh yes he can yes he can he already did forgive you at the cross 2,000 years ago and now you have to accept that forgiveness and believe in Jesus no matter who else tries to hold that against you you may still have to stay in prison the rest of your life if you committed a crazy act but you can be forgiven right now prison or not and have the freedom and joy and forgiveness and eternal life of the Lord Jesus Christ amen it's all good news and then of course another key dynamic of the gospel is that Jesus after being dead for three days was raised back to life resurrected and he is alive forevermore in fact he is more alive right this moment than you or me and he is seated at the right hand of God right now in the highest heavens until his physical return now all of that is the best possible news that can ever be heard that is the gospel that I just detailed only an almighty God can create all things create the heavens and the earth and then walk among us on this earth as he did in Christ Jesus the divine Son of God this is the number one message yesterday it's the number one message today and it's the number one message throughout all of eternity it is God's number one desire his greatest desire that everyone hear this good news about Jesus that people can be saved that people can have eternal life and then live in his presence forever and ever now I said earlier in the broadcast that one of the key words in Matthew 24 verse 14 is the term the end and Jesus said that quote the gospel would be preached to the whole world and to all nations and then Jesus said the end shall come end quote Matthew 24 verse 14 now, first of all this term the end which the Lord used was coined by the prophet Daniel about 600 years before Christ and it specifically refers to the final three and a half year period of unparalleled horror and terror and death at the hands of Antichrist just before Christ's return on the very last day Jesus foretold of these final three and a half years saying that unless those days were cut short then no life would be saved that's extreme that's a bad scenario that last final three and a half years Matthew 24 verse 22 and another key to know still talking about the end that only one angel in Revelation 14 6 is shown at the middle point as the sole preacher of the gospel during the remaining final three and a half years now that's extreme in fact the prime preachers of the gospel the prime preachers being the born-again body of Christ will have already been taken before this mid seven year point in the rapture of the church and so in effect this angel in Revelation 14 6 
as I emphasized, being at the mid-seven-year point, is apparently the only one remaining in the earth realm to preach the gospel through the final three and a half years. And this is alarming, actually, from a different angle, because it indicates the magnitude of rebellion of the people left here on earth which had huge tangible signs given to them over and over during the first three and a half years. Although they still rejected God and still remained unrepentant, which kept them here during the final three and a half years. In fact, Revelation 14, 6 is the only time the word gospel is used at all in the entire book of Revelation, right at the middle point of the seven-year tribulation. And, again, preached by this one angel, the gospel, preached by this one angel during these last horrific three and a half years. I'll read it, Revelation 14, 6. And I, this is the Apostle John writing the book of Revelation. He said, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the eternal gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Revelation 14, 6. Brothers and sisters in Christ, everyone listening, to close this broadcast, let me make a couple points. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. That is a powerful promise. It says that the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. If you're thirsty for God today, then it's your move to accept it and to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as Savior and Lord. Ask him directly. Say, Lord, save me. Save me, Lord. Ask him to fill you with his eternal life and fill you with his power. When he does, you will know it. Here's one more powerful promise I'll close the broadcast with. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. That these things have been written in the New Testament about Jesus, the Son of God, in order that you may know that you have eternal life. How powerful of a promise is that? We can tangibly know we're saved. Again, that is the best news of all. The Lord will directly give you eternal life and make you know you've got it. Only God can do that. 